Good morning, guys. Uh, today we're looking at SIRDs. What are SIRDs? And uh, and hopefully looking a little bit at simplifying SIRDs as well. Um, first of all, we're going to look at what is a SIRD. Well, hopefully you'll remember that a SIRD is a number that is generally under what we call a root sign or a radical sign. Now, this can get a little bit confusing because I'm going to write two different numbers here. One is a third, and one is not a third. I wonder if you can figure out which one is a third, and what is not, which one is not a third. Hopefully, you figured out that sixteen, or square root of sixteen, or root sixteen, or radical sixteen, is not a third. Okay. The reason for this is because we can simplify the square root of sixteen to be four. Now, basically, what the the you know the official definition of a third is, where I cannot. Or, or they say basically a third is an ir irrational number. Okay, so they call that an irrational number, as opposed to a rational number. So what is a rational number? Well, a rational number is where you can write it um, as a, like a fraction, a over b, where both these numbers here are integers. Now, hopefully, you remember that an integer is simply a whole number including zero as well, of course, but a positive and negative whole numbers. So for example, um, the square root of 16, which equals four, can be written as four over one, okay? But as opposed to, if you grabbed at your calculator and typed in the square root of five, you find that it won't come out to be a whole number. It comes out to be something along the lines of like 2.236, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So it keeps on going. So it's not like a, a nice sort of fraction, like a four over one, um, you know. So basically a, a third involves having a number with a root sign, a root sign, or that's also called a radical, okay? So you can have things like the cube root um, of seven, Out of those two numbers, I wonder which you would say is rational or irrational, or which one is a third or not a third. Hopefully, you can recognize that this is an irrational number or a third, as opposed to this, because the cube root of 8, if you did that in your calculator, you come with the answer of 2. So obviously, that can be written as 2 over 1, so that is not a third. So let's just get that straight. First of all, a third is simply a number that is written with a radical sign or a root sign that can't be simplified to a nice whole number, okay, like four or two in this case. Okay, so that's very basic what a third is. So sometimes you'll remember um, when we did um, some other work uh, with our trigonometry, we looked at looking at uh, exact values. Now, our values looked at things like this. Okay, remember... Yeah, we did that little triangle, and we had, um, that was 60 degrees, 30 degrees, which is good for your trigonometry revision, um, which we said that was a side of 2 centimetres, half of 2 made 1 centimetre, and then 2 squared, which is 4, minus 1 squared, 1 is root 3, okay? And you might have asked to be, find the value of sine 60, or the exact value. Now, the exact value meant we had to leave it in third form because if you use your calculator it's not going to give you an exact number so if I sound sin 60 well at 60 it's root 3 on 2 because opposite over hypotenuse so we left it as root 3 on 2 so the exact value would be root 3 on 2 because if I again use my calculator and did sin 60 it would give me a decimal place that would be we'd have to give an approximate answer like you know, 5.2 or something like that to one decimal place two decimal places so an exact value or a third gives you the exact value of that number without having calculated. Okay, because again, you can't find, you can only give an approximation to one or two decimal places of a third. Um, so, yeah, that's why we can't actually go ahead and use a calculator to find that when, of course, we're looking for the exact values. Okay, so hopefully we can recall that a third is simply a number that has a radical sign or a square root sign or a cube root sign above it. So, what we want to look at once we've recognized that we have a third, is how to simplify a third. And that's all we'll be doing in this lesson. Now, hopefully, again, you have done this before. If not, this is totally new to you. That's okay. Okay, now, I'm just going to look at this question. I know this is not a third. 
Okay, but how would you simplify square root of 9? Well, you probably don't need a calculator, but if you did have a calculator, you could do that. But hopefully you'd recognize that square root of 9 equals 3. So these particular uh, numbers, rational numbers, are nice to have because we can simplify them very quickly. Obviously, if I had the square root of 5, which is a third, we can't simplify it any further because there's nothing smaller we can make it because obviously it doesn't go into a nice rational number like the top one does. So we can't really do anything with that simplifying um, part there. So, but then you come to a question like this. You might have, let's say, the square root of, let's say, 8. You go, well, okay, I can't square root 8 because I can square root 9, but I can't square root 8. So how can I simplify that? Is it possible? Is it just like the square root of 5? But in this case, it is not the same as square root of 5 because this can be simplified. Again, if you've done this before, you might remember it. If not, what we want to do, we want to see if we can break down the square root of 8 into its factors, or two factors. So let's think, what two numbers multiply to give 8? Well, you can have 8 and 1, but as we know, often 8 and 1 doesn't help us. But what you, we can do, we could do 4 times 2, because 4 times 2 is 8. Now, the reason why we do this, and, and there will be a bit of a, a trend to it you, that you'll see, that this, in fact, is exactly the same as saying square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Now, again, you might be thinking, why are we doing that? However, you might have recognized something. You might have recognized that the square root of 4 is not a third. It's not an irrational number because we can find the square root of 4. So what is the square root of 4? The square root of 4 is 2. So now we've got 2 times root 2. I'm going to write it like that because it's like having a 2a. You don't have to, you can just put them together. Okay? It's still there. There is an invisible little times in there, but we don't have to put it there. And actually what we've now done, we've now simplified the third root 8 into 2 root 2. Okay, so a good idea if you have to simplify a third and you're given a question where you need to simplify a third, let's see if we can break the third down into numbers that would give us, I guess a, a good way of putting it would be a perfect square, like 4, like four because it's 2 squared, or 9 is 3 squared. Let's have a look at this one. We're going to do, um, let's say, the square root of 18. Now again, if you put that into your calculator, it's not going to come up to be a nice whole number. So it is in fact a third. And it won't let you put it as a fraction. So again, it's an irrational number. But let's see if we can break down the square root of 18 into some combinations. Now, I could do 6 and 3 because 6 times 3 is 18, right? That's correct. But are you able to square root either of those two numbers? No. So that's not going to work. But you may have said, what about 9 times 2? Because you've hopefully recognized that the square root of 9 is 3. And so we're simply just left with 3 root 2. Now, some people like to write that extra step out by saying the square root of 9 times the square root of 2. If you are that kind of person and you want to write that extra step out, then go for it, okay? There's no harm in doing that. But if you think you know straight away when you've got the 9 times 2 underneath the, the, the uh, radical sign, then you can just put the 3 at the front. Okay, and that means 3 times root 2, which would give you, if you want to check on your calculator, it will give you the exact same answer as root 18, or radical 18. Okay, so that's what we look at simplifying. So, you know, my best suggestion when you're doing these kind of questions, look for, for your perfect square numbers. So when I'm talking about my perfect square numbers, I'm talking about things like um, 1 squared is 1, which doesn't often help you. 2 squared is 4, so that's a perfect square. 3 squared is 9, perfect square. 4 squared is 16, perfect square. 5 squared is 25, perfect square. And generally, those ones will give it to you. Like, we'll, we'll give you most of the answers, but you can still get up to like 6 squared, 7 squared, 8 squared, 9 squared. But generally, most of your numbers will, will include these ones here, not too many more. So let's have a look at another example. Let's say the square root of 50. Now, again, we could do 5 times 10. Yes, we could do that. You know, we could do a lot of different things. But 5 times 10 
doesn't it include any of these little numbers here? And that's the whole reason of, of breaking it down because we want to have a perfect square which we can square root. So what times in here can we times the other to make 50? Well, you might recognize 25 times 2 makes 50. So the square root of 25 is 5, and we've got root 2 left. So it's not that difficult, is it? Okay, once you've found or you located and one of your perfect squares that you can break it down to, it's quite a nice little easy thing to sort of, sort of do. Another popular one is square root of 20. Okay, so square root of 20, hopefully, you know, let's have a look. Well, 10 and 2 is not going to work, 20 and 1 is not going to work, but you may have recognized 4 and 5, again, because see the 4? Okay, that's one of our perfect squares. So the square root of 4 makes 2, so we make 2 root 5. Again, if you wanted to put square root of 4 times the square root of uh, 5 into that extra step there, you're more than welcome to do that. Okay, and we get 2 root 5. Look, that's it. I hope you found this useful. Please, please, please practice this stuff. Go on to the next couple of lessons that I've got set out for you um, because it's not actually that challenging. It's pretty fun. Have a good day.